Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Holy Thursday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome as we come together to begin this sacred triduum by celebrating this Mass of the Lord's Supper. We hear tonight of this great act of service that Jesus makes when he stoops down to wash the feet of his disciples. And we too are called to be of service to one another. For the times perhaps we notice that we have failed to be servants. Let's now ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness, but most of all, the courage to serve when we see the need. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people of good will. We yes. praise you, we yes. bless you, we yes. adore you, we yes. glorify you, we yes. give you thanks yes. for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, they shall take every man a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then a man and his neighbor next to his house shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs in the evening. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the house in which they eat them. And they shall eat that flesh that night, roasted with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. In this manner you shall eat it, with loins girded, 
your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall fall upon you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as an ordinance forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The cup Cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love one another even as I have loved you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with that towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, 
You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he'd washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him on his breast. And Simon Peter therefore motioned him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, It is the one whom I give the piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How well do you follow Jesus? What's the quality of the way that you follow Jesus? John's Gospel gives us a beautiful image of a follower of Jesus, one who reclines at his breast, one who is close to the chest of Jesus. One who can, because he is so close, hear the heartbeat of Jesus. There is a sinking between the heartbeat of Jesus and the ear of the one who is close to Jesus. And it seems to me that's a wonderful image of what someone who is a Christ follower really is. One who is in sync with the heartbeat of the Master, one who is in sync with the heartbeat of Jesus. And so it seems that there's a, a process of following Jesus in the Gospels. And I want to suggest that it's symbolized by three groups. The first one is the crowd that is so often with Jesus. We hear of the crowd over and over again. They hang around him. They are intrigued by him. They have not quite grasped it yet. They keep a safe distance, yet they are interested in what he does and in what he says. Sometimes we can be like that crowd. We profess faith in Jesus, but we keep our distance. We don't want too much of this Jesus stuff. We still want our life, as sometimes we say. We hear things and we participate in ritual, but very often that's where things seem to end. And then there's another layer. There's the, the disciple, the disciple. They follow Jesus. They want to listen to Jesus. 
their self-image begins to change as they hang around with Jesus. They don't always get it right. Look at Simon Peter. Sometimes there's a part of us that is like that as well. We do the things we think we need to do. We, we do believe, but very often our belief is more like duty. We're interested, but somehow it's something that is dutiful. For many Catholics, it means that our faith is about rules and regulations. And, and that's kind of where we stop. It's about making sure I fulfill the rules and the regulations. And then the next layer is the apostle, like John, close to Jesus. His ear is in sync with the heartbeat of Jesus. He wants his life to beat in sync with that of Jesus. He's not just interested in doing a couple of good things, but rather his whole life is focused on the Lord. He's orientated towards Jesus himself. And because of that, he's orientated towards others in loving service. The apostle is one who is sent by Jesus to go and to be of service to others. The apostle is one who, like Jesus, is willing to descend, is willing to stoop down and wash the feet of his brothers and sisters or her brothers and sisters. The apostle is one who is willing to challenge the order of things because they feel so secure in their relationship with the Lord. Peter's right. He says to Jesus, no, you can't wash my feet because you are reversing the norm. You are doing things opposite to the way that they should be done. It's a shocking gesture that the master, the teacher, stoops down to wash the feet of his followers. You would think it was the other way around. We too very often say no to that kind of service because it's hard work. It demands something of us and it is uncomfortable to wash the feet of others. It's not the way we think things should be. I wonder whose feet we ought to be washing today. It seems to me that the feet that we should be washing are the feet of those who are the nobodies of our world or those who have been demonized by our society and even at times by our religious communities. Those who have no chance, those who perhaps have no way of ever paying us back. The beggars at traffic lights, and in this country, you don't have to go far to find them. And this does not always mean that we have to give to them materially, but sometimes simply acknowledging them as human beings who are struggling is enough. It's the beginning of this feet-washing process. Those who have been excluded because of the chronic poverty in this country, aided and abetted over and over by those in political office because of their corruption and their greed, those who opposite to Jesus think that they should be served rather than serving. Abused women and children, migrants and refugees, people of different skin colors and cultures and languages, women fighting so that they can live with equal dignity to men and be 
remunerated as men are remunerated in their professional lives. The LGBTI community, who even at times feel that they are rejected by the religious community, by us, these are the very people whose feet we are called to wash. The nobodies and the demonized of this world. Tonight we celebrate at this Mass of the Last Supper, Jesus giving his body and his blood. We celebrate the institution of the Eucharist. We believe that God is concealed in the Eucharist that we celebrate here tonight, in the bread and in the wine. But that's only half the story, because there is an intimate connection, it seems to me, between recognizing God concealed in the bread and the wine and recognizing God concealed in the eyes of the nobodies and the demonized of our world. If that Eucharist, if that God is taken in by us, is consumed by us, it seems to me that the way that we should live is like Jesus to stoop down and to serve. Because God is very much concealed in the faces of the ones that so often perhaps we would rather not want to serve because there is no reward for us. We won't see God in the bread and the wine if we cannot recognize God in the faces of the nobodies and the demonized in our society and in our religious communities. God is concealed in acts of service. God is concealed as one who stoops down to serve, who takes the lowly position. If you want to glimpse God, look for someone whom you can serve. Look for someone who is a nobody. Look for someone who has been demonized. And in that way, we become real apostles of Jesus our own lives sinking to his heartbeat. How well do you follow Jesus? Are you comfortable and satisfied with being a crowd? Are you comfortable and satisfied with being a disciple? Or do you desire to be an apostle, one who serves and who is sent, finding God in those with whom we choose to stoop down and wash feet, those who so often are the rejected, those who reveal to us more than anything else the face of God today. Jesus stripped himself of his outer garment and stooped down to wash the disciples' feet. He then told them that they ought to do the same for one another. We are invited to remove the garments of pride, arrogance, selfishness, and being unforgiving, so that we too can stoop down to be of service to our brothers and sisters. Take a moment now to consider what you need to strip yourself of so that you can truly seek to serve others following the example of Jesus. Who might God be asking you to be of service to today? A family member? A colleague? A friend? A stranger? Take a few moments now to pray for the grace to be more like Jesus, the one who comes not to be served, but to serve.
we have heard God's word and so we are invited now to bring our needs before the Lord. Let's pray in a special way that we would truly become servants of the gospel by how we choose to stoop down and wash the feet of our brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's pray for the church, that the church would be a place where people feel welcome, where they would feel warmth, where they would feel the love and the mercy and the embrace of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And I'm going to invite you now, wherever you are, to make your own prayers to the Lord. We will give a short pause. If you gather together with others, maybe you can speak those prayers out loud. Let's bring all our prayers tonight before our God. Lord our God, you hear our prayers, those we have made here at this altar, but those too that are made in the places and the homes of those who join us. And so we ask that you hear these, our prayers, and you answer them as you know best through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. This is be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, so we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine and work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, who is our almighty creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's creatures. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh, which that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices 
which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guide, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Buti, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Lord, remember your servants and all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. 
to us also your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in the fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we ask you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. And so we pray, through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. And so it was the Lord Jesus who taught us to call God our Father. In faith and with great courage, we dare to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's spend a moment now praying for peace in our own hearts, in our families, our country, and the world in which we live. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in blood of Christ, bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.